folks! This is Meredith from the Papery Craftery and today is going to be a pretty quick video. Uh, we're going to be making some wavy flower buds and we're going to be building off of two of my last couple of videos and I'll explain in a minute. Uh, to start with I'm using two different colors of pink and I'm also going to be pulling out my uh, paper cripper again. I showed this in my last video to a little bit more detail. Uh, this time I'm going to be using the smallest crimper on this tool. I will be using my ruler pretty frequently throughout this entire video. I have my white glue in a needle nose container and I also have a slotted quilling tool. I have some pins. I'm going to use those for a little bit later on and then also I have a wax paper covered fork work board. To start off, I'm going to take a long strip of this lighter colored pink and I'm going to tear five inches off my strip and run it through the smallest uh, teeth of my crimper. Again, if you missed that last video about how to use a paper crimper for quilling, I'll link to that down below and you can catch up there if you need to. After I get my paper run through, I'm going to go ahead and roll it on my slotted tool just like I would a regular quilling strip that hasn't been crimped in any way. You do want to be careful that you don't pull really hard or smush this too much while you're rolling it up, but it really, other than that, isn't too different. After I pop it off, I'm going to let it open up just a hair and then I will apply a little bit of glue to the end and let that set and then I'm going to pinch it into a teardrop by just giving a good pinch on one side. These are going to be used for the very center of this blossom. Oh, there we go. This is about what you should be looking at. You can still see a bit of the wave on the inside from the crimp but you have a nice teardrop shape as well. Next thing we're going to be doing is tearing off four different strips of different sizes. I'm going to run through this real quick and then I'll show you how we're using them. That first strip there is one and a quarter inch. The next strip is going to be one and a half inch. And then we're going to go up to one and three quarter inches. And then if you're following along, you might have guessed we're going to be doing two inches. This is a little bit of a darker color pink. I'm going to grab my lighter pink crimped teardrop and I'm going to apply a tiny line of glue on the end where the point is and we're going to be using these darker pink papers to do what is known as the wheat ear technique. And I'll show you what that means as I go along. With that little strip of glue, I'm just gluing down the shortest of the dark pink strips. And then I'm going to add another strip of glue and then the next longest. And then another tiny strip and then the third longest, so we're at the one and three quarter inch strip now. And again, I'm just gluing the very, very end to the tip of that teardrop. And then lastly is that longest strip, the two, two inches. So this is what it should look like. I'm gonna hold it up here at this point. Take your view from the side. One, two, three, four strips right on the edge. And using my slotted tool, I'm gonna run it down like you're curling a ribbon on a package. That's gonna soften up my paper and help it just be able to bend without creasing at all. And now I'm gonna do the same thing on the other side, bringing it over with a tiny strip of glue along the edge. And it's gonna make like a loop right around the teardrop. And we'll do the second one. Boop. And then I'm gonna do the third and the fourth in the same way. 
I just touched on this wheat ear technique a few weeks back when I made a rainbow uh, umbrella. This is the technique I used minus the, um, the teardrop on the inside. This is a technique I used to make the raindrops that were going over the umbrella. So if you haven't seen that, you might want to check it out. Uh, I will link to that down below. There we go. At this point, that is the second stage of making our little flower petal. And just to bring back the crimper one more time, we're going to take another strip of the lighter color. This one is about two and a half inches. It's going to be a little bit more we need, but easier to go a little bit over at this point. Run that through. I chose to do the same small teeth and a small strip of glue on the tip of that flower petal that we just did. And I'm just going to pull this around right there. I'm not going to glue it all the way around. Just from end to end is fine. Tear off the excess once I measure it with my hand and then a touch more glue there. So it's like another crimped edge and it ended up being a little bit too long. So let me just snip that puppy on. So that's gone. Oh. There we go. So this is what we're looking for for one of the wavy flower petals. A little crimp on the inside, some wheat ear, and then more crimp on the outside. And after making uh, what that, five more quickly, we need six total. We're going to glue them together, and this really couldn't be any easier. It's just a matter of putting a little bit of glue between each one and getting them where you like them. It might be fun just to use these to make a heart. You can see there, those two petals together already look like a heart. Uh, that's going to inspire anybody to use those. You don't need to use pins for this. I just wanted to show it's always an option if you want things to stay real tight together and stay in place while you're gluing. Don't be afraid to use the pins. We're not going to be using this wax paper after this. This is just to keep the keep the petal together while we're building it. So there's no harm in using pins at this point. But anyway, just keep adding a little bit of glue, putting in your petals. You might need to move them around a little bit as they get settled in. But that's about it. That's about what you're looking for. I apologize for not having an exact color name or brand for this paper. Honestly, I have no idea what it is. I don't know where I got it online somewhere. It was a multi-pack of three millimeter pink paper. I don't use this size for very much, so I was just trying to find a project to get rid of it. But I did make a couple of the same flower using, um, well, this is what the same size looks like when it's all done. It's kind of a, a chunkier flower than I would normally work in. This is the 1 8 inch paper that I tend to work in the most. You can see it's a little more, a little more chunky, but hey, mix and match. There's no rule that says they all have to be the same size. They can be different widths, add a little bit of excitement to your project. Not all flowers are the same, but you can make these any size. That's really my point. This one is a, uh, a rose colored paper and I think a pale pink. I think they're both from Craft Harbor, if I'm not mistaken. But that's about it for this project. I just wanted to show some more technique, the wheat ear and another way to use your crimper. So I hope you enjoyed this one. I'll leave some links down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.